So what's going on guys, it's another video where I talk about all the interesting things to me in the world of technology and in today's video we're going to be talking about these smart watches. Now of course with all the news yesterday with Apple's watch, I'm not going to call it the iWatch this time because it's just called Apple's watch or Apple watch. Um, I did want to talk about some of the competition out there. So let's talk about like, the LG G watch. This is another smart watch with a rectangular face. It runs Android Wear. You can get it for $179. And then there's the Samsung Gear Live. Again, it has a rectangular face, has plug-in charging, runs Android Wear again, and you can get that for $199. But what I found interesting also is what with Monroe is doing, and that's with the Moto 360. It has a circular face, it has a charging cradle, it runs Android Wear again, and it costs $249. Now, these three companies are doing some interesting things with the smartwatch, but what I would say is I think Samsung is creating the most impressive one here. And that's with the Samsung Gear S. It's similar to Samsung Gear Live, but this one runs 3G or Wi-Fi and also GPS, and you can make phone calls with it on its own. And the funny thing is about this is that you would need an Android phone to install apps, but on the watch itself, it's running Tizen, and that's the platform that Samsung is developing. And I just thought it was really impressive. Now the price wasn't announced for that one, but still, it just shows you what the capabilities of these smartwatches are. And if you can do something without having your phone around, and it's a watch, I wouldn't say it's a bad idea. But the fact is, is that what we saw from Apple was more of the same or more of the old stuff that these other companies were doing already. So I think it's a little bit ridiculous when some of these people who review these products say that we should all be thanking Apple for even getting into the smartwatch game. They don't need anyone thanking them. They're the ones who want to make money from all the customers that might buy a smartwatch from them. But still, if you know what the competition is doing, right now I'm going to say that Samsung is doing the best job because this watch being a watch that you can make a phone call without needing the phone is impressive. Now, am I going to say that I want to use this watch all the time or even play games on it or make a phone call? Probably not because the screen is so small. So I think it's an unnecessary purchase for myself and I don't find myself wanting to buy a smartwatch. That's pretty much it. I'm not knocking anyone for wanting to buy that, but I don't think they're going to be as popular as a smartphone. And the smartphone itself is something that we use all the time because you can equate this to something that is like a PC or a traditional computer, I should say. So this is something that I'm interested in just to know about, but as far as me purchasing a smartwatch, not happening. I still think it's a waste of money, and I also think there's more capabilities to this. Just recently, looking at this smartwatch from Samsung, I can tell they're going to go and get a little bit more into flexible display, and we talked about flexible AMOLED displays. This is something these companies need to pay attention to. You have to innovate. You cannot just make a traditional watch put a screen as the face and then call it a smartwatch and then expect everyone to spend all this money on it and not have a problem with the capabilities of it. Because at the end of the day, if you're gonna be spending a lot of money on one of these devices, you want it to be worth the cost. So those are my personal opinions, of course. You guys can tell me what you think. Let me know in the comments below, would you ever buy a smartwatch? And of course, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, let me know you're watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.